Hello and welcome back. We are doing another quick train tutorial. Today's one really is going to be quick. I'm just going to run through what the difference is between left and right hand drive and why you might want to use two way track. So, so far we've looked at um, trains that literally go around in a loop. We've looked at trains. Let's walk away from that radar. It's making beep noises. Um, <laughs> we've looked at trains which go forwards and then backwards along a single track uh, and how to signal that to allow multiple trains to share the same signal track. Today we're going to look at a more standard rail arrangement which is two parallel tracks. And the idea of parallel tracks is that the trains use one, one track to go in one direction and another track to go in the other direction. Um, so a bit like lanes on a road um, and this, this allows traffic to be moving with multiple trains moving in the same direction down the same piece of track without them bumping into each other or without them getting into signal contention. And then trains going the other way obviously are on a different track so there is no contention between directions. At least that, that's the idea. So let's go back over here and we're going to start looking at left hand drive. So this train here, let's start it off, it's going to go between Phobos and Deimos. Let's let that train go. You can see it's he heading towards the right of the screen. Um, in a moment it will come back. There it is. And then it will head towards the left of the screen. So this arrangement is called left hand drive because um, if you imagine yourself sitting in the train, um, your right hand is towards the middle between the two tracks and your left hand would be outside the track. Um, so it would be like driving on a road which uh, you drove on the left. Uh, and because of the way that the Factorio, uh, just sorry, I've got stupid fast legs on for some reason. That's, no, that's even worse. Um, let's see if we can... Right, I really don't need these. Let's try one of these. That's a bit better. Um, Alright, so the way we do this is we arrange our signals and our stations and all the rest of the interacting entities between the two tracks. So, no matter how we arrange things, that's the width of our rail. Everything about them is on the inside. The other way, obviously, is to arrange the signals on the outside of the two tracks. And that is right-hand drive. So this is going to go between sticks and leaf. Off it goes. And it's right-hand drive because if you imagine yourself sitting in the train in the direction of travel, your right hand would be outside the two rails. Your left hand would be towards the inside of the two rails. And around and around it goes. So everything's quite happy here, the train continues. And you can see here the signals are placed to the outside of the track, as is the station. Okay, so this, rather than having a footprint of the two tiles, has a footprint of the two tiles plus a signal. So it's strictly wider, yeah? And um, so, there are various aesthetic choices to be made, and I'm not going to make them for you. Uh, some people prefer having the signals on the outside, some prefer having them on the inside. Um, and then as you work with junctions and other um, interesting bits of rail, uh, you find that having the signals on the inside or the outside actually is easier for some things or more difficult for others. So it's not really a, a one-size-fits-all. Which one you prefer, within Factorio there are people who don't care and then there are people who um, have an almost religious, religious zeal for one or the other. Um, I'm not here to change your mind, uh, I'm just interested in letting you know what the names are. Uh, the only thing that's you can... so there are some things you can do with one of these arrangements that you can't do with the other. So if I put the two tracks literally next to each other then I can put signals on the outside. I obviously can't put signals on the inside. So if you if you want to have tracks which are literally next to each other, but going in opposite directions, then you have to go for the right-hand drive option. 
which is fine. Okay, uh, this is not a stupid way to set up a rail network. It's just really tricky to figure out how to signal certain types of junctions correctly. The other case you sometimes get is uh, imagine you were doing a map which is um, where the height is constrained, where it's it's only 64 tiles high or something, and you want to run your rail along the outside of the the world. Well, you'd have to use left-hand drive rail for that because you would have to you'd have to put this so that the edge of the world is here because there's no way to put your signal outside the edge of the world. You see what I mean? All right, let's delete that again. Um, so that's it. Uh, so remember, left-hand drive is when you keep your, all your signals and all the other things on the inside of the two tracks. Right-hand drive is when you keep all your signals and stuff on the outside of the tracks. And that's it. Next time uh, we'll look at uh, a couple of other issues. Um, so in, in future tutorials uh, we'll look at track gauges, which is how far apart the tracks are from one another. So that's obviously as close as it can be. You get the idea. There's various spacings you could choose. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about why one spacing might be more convenient than another for certain jobs. Uh, and then we'll also look at how to signal an intersection uh, for left and right hand drive trains and we'll look at how to signal a, um, a, a station that branches off from left and right hand drive. Um, but for now, this is our left hand right hand drive tutorial and uh, thanks so much for watching. I will see you again soon. Bye bye.